Starting off at number 10 now we have SuicideMouse.avi. This is the file name of a supposed unseen episode of Mickey Mouse. Originally people just thought it was a loop of Mickey walking past 6 buildings before the clip faded to black. He wasn't dancing or smiling, just walking, but other than that it didn't seem too creepy. Everyone thought there was nothing after that, but when the clip was digitized people noticed that it was a lot longer than they thought. After a long period of darkness the clip actually returns to Mickey walking. There was now a gurgle cry in the background that got louder. Then the picture changed. We see the sidewalk go in impossible directions. Mickey's face curls into a smirk. His face then began to fall apart. His eyes rolled to the bottom of his chin like marbles in a fishbowl and his smile crept up the left side of his face. The screaming noise continued until the 8 minute mark and then suddenly stopped as it cut to the classic Mickey Mouse fade at the end of every episode with what sounded like a broken music box playing in the background. The Disney employees who first watched this actually left the room and asked the security guard to watch to the end for them. Legend says they never know what happened at the end because the security guard killed himself soon after. Right after repeating the phrase, real suffering is not known seven times. They say the file can still be found in the dark corners of the internet under the title suicidemouse.avi. Moving on to number nine now, we have Squidward Suicide. Even if you've never watched an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants before, you probably recognize Squidward as a character from the show. He's a sort of grouchy foil to SpongeBob's happy plans, but in this lost episode, things took a much darker turn. In 2010, a user posted a creepypasta online called Squidward's Suicide. Suicide. He claimed he had seen this lost episode during his internship at Nickelodeon Studios. At first they assumed it was just an office prank, but realized they were wrong as soon as they played it. The scene showed Squidward sitting alone on a bed while disturbing music got louder in the background. The scene is spliced with quick flashes of dead children and gore. When it cuts back to Squidward, his face is black with red eyes. Eventually a strange detached voice tells Squidward to shoot himself with a shot. Shotgun. He does just that, he dies, and the video ends. Apparently, the police investigated all of this, but they couldn't find the culprit who made it, and the video has never surfaced online since. Probably just a creepypasta, but a really good one, I think. Next up at number eight now, we have Man's Best Friend. That's the name of this lost episode of Ren and Stimpy that first aired in 2003. It involves some aspects that the FCC did not agree was suitable for a younger audience. Ren and Stimpy are trained to be better pets. Stimpy is given a cigar shaped dog treat as a reward. Their owner tells them to not go near the couch, but then says they should so that they can be punished. Ren sort of freaks out and starts sobbing. Stimpy gets yelled at for going on the couch. Their final lesson involves their owner teaching them to protect him. He tells them to attack him with a wooden paddle. Stimpy refuses, but Ren, who's sick of this treatment that day, beats his owner within an inch of his life. The episode was banned and the director lost his job over it. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Dead Bart. According to internet legend, there was a lost episode of The Simpsons from the show's first season. It was entirely written by the show's creator, Matt Groening, who decided to keep it a secret from the rest of his team. Now they say that Matt has the ability to predict the deaths of every guest star who has ever appeared on The Simpsons. He decided to put all of this power on display in this one episode. The episode itself was pretty horrific anyway. It involved Bart dying in a plane accident. The whole family mourned his death for a year, wasting away until they became skeletons themselves. When they visited his grave, every other gravestone belonged to celebrity guests who had appeared on the show before, complete with their name, birth date and death date. And legend says it was very accurate with the people that had already died. Now on top of that, some gravestones even featured people who hadn't been on the show yet. Yeah, that sort of went up a level at the end there. Coming at number six now, we have Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This is the story of an episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie that accidentally aired on Cartoon Network at 5 a.m. one morning. Legend says that the animation was choppy, the sound was constricted and muffled, a strange VHS line skittered across the screen. The scenery was described as overwhelmingly dark and depressing without changing props and other background objects looking stormy. The characters seemed agitated and angry 
angry. They had tears in their eyes. At one point, the animation switched to claymation. The quality of the episode deteriorated from that point on, becoming almost unwatchable. The episode ended with Johnny swallowing Naz's head as she kicked and struggled. He held her like this until she went limp. A zoom in on his face revealed he had extremely small and very realistic looking human eyes. The camera then shows Eddie's house and only Eddie's house for the remaining three minutes and then it cuts to black. Next to our number five now we have Candle Cove. This is a famous creepypasta that was shared in the format of an email conversation on a forum. It starts with one user asking if anyone remembers a kids show called Candle Cove that was on TV in the early 70s. Other users start saying they remember it too and together they piece together the memories to figure out what the show was all about. Candle Cove revolved around a little girl who imagined herself to be friends with pirates. Their ship was called the Laughing Stock and there was another character called Pirate Percy that got scared a lot. Then the memories got creepier. They remembered the ship was a wooden smiling face with the lower jaw submerged. It looked like it was swallowing the sea. Then there was the villain sidekick, Horace Horrible. His face was just a handlebar moustache above tall narrow teeth. The real villain though was simply called the Skin Taker, a dirty skeleton wearing a brown top hat and cape. His glass eyes too big for his skull. His mouth never opened or closed. His jaw just slid back and forth. When the girl asked him why this was, the skin taker told her it was to grind her skin. Then they remembered one episode where the show faded in from black, the camera cut between the characters faces and they were just screaming and screaming. The girl was crying, looking like she'd been through hours of this. The story ended with one of the users saying they had just visited their mum at a nursing home. Now she said she was surprised that they remember the show because when they were little, they used to tell her they were going to watch Candle Cove and then they would just tune in to TV static and watch Dead Air for 30 minutes. Next up at number four now, we have Akaruyo Bubbles. That's the name of this Lost Powerpuff Girl episode. For those of you that have never seen the show, it's about three manufactured superheroes created by Professor Utonium. The story I read about this episode is truly horrific. It involves a twisted experiment which created a terrifying, murderous version of Bubbles. She attacks the screen and ends up dying in the end of the episode with people staring at her lifeless mangled body but she's then brought back to life only to stare into the camera with angry red eyes. She breathes heavily, the sound gets louder and then the episode ends in darkness. I've summarized the all of that there. The full story is honestly a lot more graphic, detailed and kind of confusing. The actual episode hasn't even surfaced. Moving on to number three now, we have Tom's Basement. This is said to be the name of a lost Tom and Jerry episode from many years ago. Something seemed different right away in this episode. Tom's owner was being physically abusive to Tom, stamping on his tail and telling him to never go down to the basement. Tom and Jerry end up scrapping in their normal way for a while with Tom getting pretty beaten up. Jerry pushes Tom to the basement door and when his owner sees him there, he goes ballistic. He screams at Tom in a rage. Jerry appears to take pity on Tom and ends up stabbing the owner repeatedly in his leg. Tom opens the basement door and they carry the owner's body down the stairs. They find dozens of other human bodies there, all showing signs of violent deaths. They shake hands, seemingly pleased that they'd stopped this serial killer, but then an evil look covers Jerry's face. He stabs Tom and throws his body onto the pile. The final scene shows Jerry putting up a for sale sign outside the house and laughing manically. Next up at number two now we have Doug's Real Life. Doug was one of the original Nicktoons on Nickelodeon. A few years ago someone shared a story online of them discovering a strange episode of the show that aired in 2005. It started with a normal intro of line drawings but the characters never appeared. The lines continued as normal, reacting as if the normal characters were there. Doug wasn't narrating his writing like normal though. He just wrote in silence for about a minute before the screen faded out. It came back with large letters that said Doug's real life. The episode started with Doug eating breakfast while the screen flashed strangely. It starts again when Doug gets to school. The hallways were full of kids we'd never seen before. It cuts and we see Doug returning home and greeting his dog Porkchop. Another flash and Porkchop turned into a hunk of rotting meat. Doug's house looks decrepit too. He walks into the house and talks to invisible people. Another flash and Doug was with his family eating dinner. His mum answered the phone. He thought it was the teacher telling her about him flunking the test that day. He imagined them yelling at him, their faces becoming gigantic and then twisted and red. The screen flashed back to the empty house. Doug was alone, 
crying and apologizing to an empty room. He went to his bedroom which was empty except for a book and a pencil. He started writing. This time his voice was narrating. He said, I can't tell which one is real. And finally, at number one now, we have Not Long Enough. This is supposed to be a lost episode of Futurama, one of my favorite shows of all time. The episode starts with Fry, Leela, and Bender making a delivery for Planet Express. The planet they land on only has one single house surrounded by empty, desolate fields on all sides. A grotesque alien answers the door. He takes a box from them, he opens it, pulls out a knife, and stabs himself. The crew don't react at all. They simply walk back to the ship in silence. They return to Earth to find New New York deserted. Fry walks to the cryogenics building where he had been frozen and begins to cry. He steps inside one of the pods and sets the time to the distant future. The screen fades to black and when we return, we see that the machine has stopped working. Parts of Fry are decaying. Bone is poking through his skin in several places. It's what I deserved, he mumbles as he climbs out of the pod. His surroundings are now psychedelic. Strange patterns and colors swirl around him. Eventually, we see that this was all in Fry's mind. His final thoughts before he died. His frozen body is now slumped outside of the cryogenic pod. Bender and Leela walk into the room. Leela says he got what he deserved. She checks her watch and says, "Looks like we need to leave for our next delivery." She takes a knife out of her pocket, places it in a cardboard box, and heads to the ship. Starting off this list in our number ten spot, we have Death. This is said to be a lost episode of. Barney and Friends that recently came to light on TikTok. Many users were claiming that they were now remembering this dark episode that they had watched many years ago, and people were claiming that this episode was so dark that it made them feel basically traumatized. While Barney and Friends usually had episodes that taught us the value of friendship and good relationships, this episode is said to have had a much darker tone and allegedly only aired one single time. The episode in question is said to have been called Death, and many people have claimed that when when the theme music started to play, you could hear a sort of creepy whispering just behind the music. After this, everything seemed to return to normal until Barney awoke. When Barney spoke, it was both the sound of his normal giggly voice, but there was also something darker behind it, like another voice underneath that was darker and lower and just sinister sounding. Apparently, this is the episode where Barney said that he was going to teach about death. People on TikTok have said that the episode ends with Barney going on a rampage and killing all of his friends on set, and at the end, he still sang the classic I love you, you love me song, but just in a bit more of a screamy, demonic way than I think any of us are used to. So yeah, while I'm not entirely sure that this episode ever existed, if it did, I think it's probably for the best that it just stays lost. In our number 9 spot today, we have The End. This Barney story has one of the darkest endings I think of any episode on this list. Before the airing, this particular episode was marketed as an unreleased episode episode that would only be airing that night. Everyone gathered to watch this new, exciting episode, but for some reason when the episode started, something was off. As the music in the beginning started to play, it just wasn't quite right. Before long, the video started to cut in and out with whatever this tape was. Suddenly, in the Barney parts of the tape, Barney was alone, without anyone around. It was really hard to make out exactly what he was saying because the audio was so distorted, but the entire thing had a very chilling energy to it. As the video progresses, the clips get more and more choppy and cut in and out more, but we see Barney with something dangerous, preparing to do what some have described as harm himself. In all copies that exist of this lost episode, this is where they stop and the tape goes black. Many people believe this is because whoever created this dark episode cut the ending out to save us all from the horrors that the original tape held. In our number 8 spot today, we have Barney's Spooky Cemetery Stories. This story about a a lost Barney episode was a story by the Shadow Reader, and basically it starts off when the creators of Barney decided one year to make a Halloween special. I personally love a good Halloween special, so that sounds great. Basically, the idea for it was to take three classic spooky tales and retell them, but give them a Barney spin. You know, make it a bit of a lighter story with some good lessons hidden inside. This 
episode ended up accidentally getting sent to a new animation studio instead of the one that they were meant to be sent to, but no one caught this mistake. This new animation studio was said to be quite a risque one that specialized in adult animation and they had quite a crude sense of humor. Cut to the day that the episode airs. Well, this episode was cut 8 minutes into airing because what happened next was the retelling of tales, but it was even more horrific than the originals. It was gory, it was scary, and it was just awful. Of course, no one wanted to be culpable for how this episode somehow made it to air for the 8 minutes it did, so all copies were immediately deleted. It is said that, save for a few recorded versions of people who were ready to tape the Halloween special at home, the episode has been completely lost. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Barney toy. This creepy Barney story starts off when there was a new product on the market. It was a toy version of Barney, but this toy had a special capability. It allowed viewers of the show who had the toy to participate, have a more visceral learning experience using the toy and certain episodes made for it. This all sounds fine and well and like a great new technology for fans of the show, until one person received their new Barney toy. Everything was going well with the new toy, they loved it, so much so that even when not watching the the interactive episodes, they still got their Barney toy to watch the regular episodes alongside. One day, the dad in this situation was listening in from another room as they hung out and spoke to their Barney toy. It seemed very cute and sweet and so sincere, like they were actually talking to a real living thing, not a toy. That was until the dad felt like he could now hear a low, grumbling voice speaking back. Well, as it turns out, this Barney doll had some kind of a curse or a demon living inside of it. And when the dad noticed something wrong, of course, the evil entity tried to do everything it could to make sure that no one listens to him. From here, all hell breaks loose, and the entity in the doll ends up having control over the sun, which leads to an exorcism being performed. A priest is called and thankfully able to rid the sun of the entity and placed it back in the toy, which is now said to be locked up and buried somewhere secret so that hopefully no one ever stumbles upon it. In our number six spot today, we have the day on set. This creepy legend starts off with someone taking note of how a lot of the friends that appear on the show, you only see them once or twice before they suddenly just disappear disappear, never to be seen again. This person took note of this after they spent a day on set, as they were one of the lucky ones who was going to be one of the friends on the show, but after leaving that day, they definitely will never be returning. As soon as they got there, things just weren't as expected. There was a very heavy and dark energy in the air, and once they saw Barney, they felt like something cold was there, rather than a warm, welcoming person that they had expected. They began to rehearse for the day, and this is when they began to realize even more grim stuff around the set. There were dangerous tools left out in plain sight, way too close to everyone who was supposed to be getting ready to perform. They began to notice some red spots on some of the costumes, especially Barney's, and when they mentioned it, everyone in the costumes just eerily and blankly stared at them. This all made them feel extremely uneasy and it led to them trying to find a way to go home early because they knew they just needed to leave. There were red flags everywhere. They explained to the crew that they suddenly weren't feeling well and that they think they needed to go home and this is when all of the actors stood there, silently staring at them. They stood there unsure of what to do for what felt like an eternity but in reality was probably about 30 seconds and when no one moved or responded, they began to walk for the door. This is when all of the actors in costumes grabbed the tools laying around the set and suddenly started running towards them, trying to catch them before they could get out the door. They ran as fast as they could and luckily reached the door before any of the actors got to them and were safe once they stepped outside. I mean, the costumed actors weren't going to burst out of the studio because they didn't want to get caught in their maniacal plans. In the end, it's safe to say that this person never watched another episode again, and they got their answer as to where all of the friends on the episodes go to. In our number 5 spot today, we have The Trip. This rumored lost episode is a bit of a lighthearted break in some of these extremely dark stories we've been talking about. This episode is said to have been one where Barney had a bit of a slip up accidentally. Playing the role of Barney probably isn't an easy one. You have to be perpetually joyful while moving and dancing around in a giant purple dinosaur costume, and I'm sure the job can be frustrating at times. This all leads up to one one day while filming, the actor playing Barney was having a particularly difficult day, personally and professionally. Of course, 
the show must go on. So he suits up, starts the show as per usual. Everything is going fine, but on this day, a member of the set team hadn't quite run some of the lines through the set properly. And what I mean by this is that there were some cords that were on the floor and they weren't taped down properly or marked, which becomes quite a tripping hazard. If you've worked as a performer before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This all leads to one moment in the show when everything has been going smoothly. Barney is in character and moving around the set, but he gets to the area with the untaped wires and it causes him to trip. In an act of frustration and probably a little terror as, well, I mean tripping in full dinosaur costume isn't exactly ideal, this man on live television lets out a series of expletives as he falls right in front of everyone on set and the thousands watching at home. Safe to say the episode that day was cut short and definitely never aired again. In our number 4 spot today we have the DVD. This story starts off with someone going to the store to buy a DVD which is so funny to me because that immediately just dates this story. How weird is that? Anyway, as they found their DVD and were about to head to pay, they accidentally stepped on something and heard a cracking sound. When they looked down, they realized that they had stepped on a DVD case of a Barney and Friends. This DVD had six episodes on it, and when they picked it up and examined it, they decided that maybe this was just meant to be, so they bought it. They didn't use this DVD right away, however, I mean it was a bit of a last minute impulsive purchase, but when the time did come, they put the DVD into the player and nothing happened. They took it out of the player and looked at it to see if there was damage or if it needed a quick cleaning, but they found nothing, so once again they put it back into the machine, and this time it started. The menu pops up first, and when it did, something seemed off. There weren't many options and there was no music playing, but hey. That's not too bad. They hit play on the first episode, and it starts off with Barney sitting on a bench looking sad. He sat there in silence for quite a while before he finally spoke. Nobody loves me anymore. I will teach them a lesson, he said, before looking directly into the camera and smiling a horrifying smile. Suddenly, someone begins walking down the road near Barney. As they pass him, Barney jumps up and scares him before grabbing him by the leg and pulling him. He pulls so hard that his entire leg comes off. Barney grabbed the other leg and kept dragging him back off the road into the bushes beside it. From here, the most gruesome things happen that I certainly cannot go into detail about, but it's safe to say that Barney had taken the life of this person. The person watching the DVD was of course absolutely horrified at what they had just watched, scared of what would happen next, so they immediately got the disc out of the place. Player. They took the disc outside, smashed it with a baseball bat as much as they could, and then threw it into the woods. They were plagued with nightmares for weeks after, and they finished off their story with this harrowing message. Quote, if you ever find a copy of it, never ever view it. Try to burn it or smash it if you can. If you view it, those horrible nightmares come flooding in. In our number 3 spot today we have The Friends. There is rumored to be a lost episode of Barney that has a part where all of the friends in the episode turn on him. What usually is a fun, loving time with lots of learning quickly turns horrendous, but not for the reasons I would have expected. Barney's kind of freaky, like I mentioned at the beginning. He's a little creepy, and if something went wrong on this show, I always expected that it would be Barney that went haywire. But in this lost episode, the roles were really reversed. It isn't quite clear exactly what Barney did, but suddenly everyone just decides that they've had it with putting up with him. It starts with one friend, but suddenly everyone starts joining in, and everything erupts into chaos. There is yelling, there is fighting, people are getting hurt, the set is being destroyed, and then suddenly everything just goes blank and the episode was cut short. This episode is said to have only aired once and the screen going blank was because the network playing it had cut it off due to the violence. This means that no one knows how the episode ends or what happens. Did everyone kiss and make up? Was there a gruesome gory ending? And how did this episode make it to air in the first place? No one except for the person who made it knows the answers to any of these questions and we are all just left to speculate. In our number 2 spot today we have The Theory. Rather than a lost episode, this is more like a horrifying Barney theory and basically it suggests that either the person who plays Barney in the costume is stuck in there and can never come out, or that Barney actually has no one in there. He's just a real sentient creature that is stuck doing this show over and over again. In both of these scenarios, 
Barney is being held against his will and forced into doing this work. And should he not deliver a happy, joy-inducing performance, he will be subjected to horrible punishments as a result. It's a terrible and terrifying theory, but since I first heard it, I can't stop thinking about it. Whether you believe it or not, it definitely adds an eerie layer to any episode because it will always linger in the back of your mind. What if? In our number one spot today, we have The Real Dinosaur. There are rumors of an episode that exists, and I'm gonna be honest, no one is really sure exactly what happens in this episode, but it doesn't even matter because there is one thing that no one who has seen this episode will ever forget. In the episode, Barney, the purple dinosaur, at some point turns into a very real, very terrifying, and very hungry dinosaur. Yep, goodbye songs and hugs, hello gigantic growls, and people running for their lives. All anyone who has seen this episode can remember is that while everyone quickly runs away, not everyone can escape the wrath of Barney, the real dinosaur. The episode featured gruesome carnage, and Barney tore his way through everyone and everything that he could. In the end, however, the episode gets even darker because Barney turns back into his regular, loving self and now has to face the consequences of what he did while he was in this monster form. It isn't clear exactly how this transformation happened, but it is clear that everyone involved and everyone who saw this episode still lives with the trauma today. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have The Simpsons. So for this one, we have this rumored lost episode of The Simpsons that is said to be titled Dead Bart. Basically, rumor has it that this episode is based on the idea that Matt Groening has this ability to accurately predict the death of all of the guest stars from the show. I mean, it seems really far-fetched, of course, but we've also seen scenarios where The Simpsons somehow accurately predicted something long before it happened. Anyways, this episode is said to have been aiming at putting this ability on full display by having it be animated to show each of the regulars or the stars of the show future death dates. Yeah. A little morbid, right? So, according to internet legend, the show featured Bart being ripped out of a plane through the window. Okay, not great. This leads to his family going into mourning for a full year until they are nothing but skeleton versions of themselves. It is also said that the graveyard where Bart is buried is full of tombstones, all of which have the death dates of every Simpsons guest that had ever and will ever appear on the show. In our number nine spot today, we have SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. How could an episode of Spongebob be scary? I mean, that jolly little sponge is like a ray of sunshine anywhere he goes in Bikini Bottom, but apparently there is one episode that is not like the others. Internet rumors have suggested that there is a lost, dark, eerie episode of Spongebob that we are all definitely glad we haven't seen. Rumor says that this episode never even made it to the final edit because it was so dark. The rumor of its existence stems from someone who claims to have seen the episode while doing an internship with Nickelodeon. This episode is said to deal with really serious topics like death and maybe even Squidward taking his own life, which honestly is really messed up. The episode thankfully never made it to air and it is said that while there was an investigation into the footage, nothing ever ended up coming of it. In our number eight spot today, we have The Peanut Vendor. The Peanut Vendor was made in 1933 and it's a really short animated film and just shows a monkey who's singing a song. This sounds cute, but I assure you, it is the stuff of nightmares. The monkey is selling peanuts and a song is about how he is only there for a limited time so everyone should come and buy some before they go to sleep. This all seems very reasonable except for the fact that this animated monkey character does not look like a monkey at all and instead looks absolutely horrifying. If you put this guy next to Jason Voorhees, I feel like I would still be more scared of whatever he is. I feel like I do not want to buy his peanuts, but I'm afraid that if I don't, he's gonna come and find me. I truly didn't know that a two minute animated video could be this creepy, but they certainly delivered. In our number seven spot today, we have Tom's Basement. Tom and Jerry is an absolute classic. What a silly little show with a great dynamic. Tom was of course the bloodthirsty cat, while Jerry was the quick, clever mouse, but apparently things for both of them turned sinister in a rumored lost episode called Tom's Basement. Basement. It is said that this lost episode was actually a short, and internet legend says that in the episode, Tom's owner told him to stay out of the basement. In fact, this owner is definitely a terrible person and is said to actually harm Tom in the episode anytime he gets near the basement door. Legend goes that Jerry ends up using this to his advantage and he starts to make Tom chase him into the basement, where he then hides while this terrible owner loses his temper. In the end, it is said that this situation continues to escalate and escalate and at least leads to Jerry killing this guy. Him and Tom then end up hiding the body in the basement and Jerry goes on to also kill Tom. I mean, what in the world? 
I'm just glad this episode isn't around anymore. In our number six spot today, we have Cat Dog. Cat Dog is actually a cartoon I can remember watching when I was a kid, and I remember it scaring the heck out of me. Cat Dog is half cat, half dog creature that gets itself into situations and has quite the time figuring everything out, considering the cat half and the dog half can't seem to get along with each other. This is just a weird premise in general, but it's not the strangest part of the show. There is an episode when Cat wants to brush dog teeth and he crawls into his own mouth and travels through his own body to get to the dog side where he then comes out of dog's mouth. So now Cat is hanging out of dog's mouth inside out with veins and muscles and everything we never wanted to see exposed. I know this was probably just meant to be like a silly little thing but it's actually really scary and just a lot for anyone to even begin to try and comprehend. Maybe I'm looking into it a little too much as an adult but overall this show just has a very weird Weird vibe. In our number five spot today, we have The Kitchen Casanova. The Kitchen Casanova was made in 1996, great year, and was a part of Cartoon Network's What a Cartoon series. Basically, it's about a guy who's trying to prepare dinner for his date, but he's exceptionally nervous, and of course, Murphy's Law would have it that everything is going wrong. This cartoon was actually eventually pulled from air because of the fact that at one point he accidentally slices off his fingers and blood goes spurting everywhere, which probably isn't the ideal image for the target audience. I don't even think that this is the worst part. In the end, when the date arrives and he reveals this big meal that he made, it's actually just the grossest and creepiest looking thing ever, and it had me feeling very glad that I was only watching a cartoon. The dinner has eyeballs, bloody bones, a severed human foot, and a rolled up tongue that unfortunately unrolls and then twitches before being covered up again. It's a pile of gross, not really food. I could get past that except for the fact that they actually eat it. I just hate that so much. All in all, this whole thing is just very bizarre, and the ending leaves you with a super uncomfortable feeling. In our number four spot today, we have Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I personally loved this show as a kid. It was so wacky and wild, but this rumored lost episode definitely doesn't seem like a good time. Legend has it that this lost episode is one that accidentally aired back in 2003. It is said that one day there was supposed to be a rerun of an already aired episode, but instead, viewers found themselves watching something much more creepy. Creepy. Apparently the characters were acting weird and the animation was super choppy. From here, in the last three minutes of the episode, claymation characters start to take over, and the episode in general is just really strange and uncomfortable and eerie. People on the internet have said that the episode was just wrong on all levels, and it left them with just a really sinister feeling. In our number three spot today, we have the Powerpuff Girls. Sugar, spice, and everything nice, the Powerpuff Girls is a classic show that might be surprising to see on this list, unless you have seen or at least heard of this rumored lost episode. While usual episodes of the show saw our three superheroes Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup along with their creator Professor Utonium just kicking butt and taking names, this lost episode is said to have shown something much darker. This episode is said to follow Professor Utonium as he encounters a terrifying dark zombie-like version of Bubbles. Apparently this Bubbles is on some sort of killing rampage. Yeah. Definitely not the type of Powerpuff episode we're used to seeing. In our number two spot today, we have Ren and Stimpy. This lost episode of Ren and Stimpy is said to have been titled Man's Best Friend. Rumor has it that this episode was meant to be aired during the original run of the second season, but it never ended up making it to air. This is because it was said to be too controversial. The most important or controversial scene in question from this lost episode is said to have seen Ren getting really violent. In this outburst, people said he was seen smoking cigars after he harmed and almost took someone's life. Rumor has it that the creation of this episode got one of the show's creators fired. This lost episode apparently stayed hidden and didn't air until 11 years later when that rumored fired creator was able to air it on Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon, which was the revival of the original series on Spike. In our number one spot today, we have Barney and Friends. This is said to be a lost episode of Barney and Friends that recently came to light on TikTok. Many users were claiming that they were now remembering this dark episode that they had watched many years ago, and people were claiming that this episode was so dark it made them feel basically traumatized. While Barney and Friends usually had episodes that taught us the value of friendship and good relationships, this episode is said to have a much darker tone and allegedly only aired one single time. The episode in question is said to have been called Death, and many people have claimed that when the theme music started to play, you could hear a sort of creepy whispering just behind the music. 
After this, everything seemed to return to normal until Barney awoke. When Barney spoke, it was both the sound of his normal giggly voice, but there was also something darker behind it, like another voice underneath that was lower and just sinister sounding. Apparently, this is the episode where Barney said that he was going to teach about death. People on TikTok have said that the episode ends with Barney going on a rampage and killing all of his friends on set, and at the end, he's still saying the classic I love you, you love me song, but just in a bit more of a screamy, demonic way than I think any of us are probably used to. So yeah, while I'm not entirely sure this episode ever existed, if it did, I think it's probably for the best that it stays lost in the past. Out of the number 10 is Phineas and Ferb part 1. Despite gaslighting the hell out of Candace, I really loved this show. Their summer was always exponentially more productive than mine, so I just liked living vicariously through them. The unreleased episode in question today was titled The Horrible Death of Phineas, so we already know it's going to be hella screwed up. Apparently this was the alternative episode to the one where the brothers were fine finally caught and sent to camp Smile Away. Either way, the episode starts with the brothers and their gang turning the family car into a flying machine. Meanwhile, Perry infiltrates Doofenshmirtz HQ and he's like, dude, I'm over everyone. I'm gonna detonate an atomic bomb on the tri-state area. And he tries shooting Perry a bunch of times while saying so. We cut back to the family's backyard where we see Phineas walking towards his mum to show her his new invention. Then Doofenshmirtz fires at Perry once again, but he dodges and in a slow motion OC inspired death, we see Phineas getting shot instead. He's lying in a pool of his own blood, and that is the end of Act 1. Coming in at number 9 is Phineas and Ferb Part 2. Now the tape continues with the words two days later flashing across the screen. The shot cuts to Candace in her room singing Yellow Sumberine while hanging a rope on the ceiling, which is never a good sign. Jeremy then comes over and asks to see Candace, but when he goes upstairs he sees that she's hung herself and then he proceeds to kiss her. At this point, Linda comes in and thinks that Jeremy is the one that choked Candace to death, which obviously is not true. Then we see Doofenshmirtz strapped to an electric chair in a state prison, surrounded by every other adult in the show. They all cannot wait till he gets executed, and it's actually Perry who switches the chair on, finally getting his revenge. But at the split second right before his death, a series of real photos appear on screen of a man in a lab coat watching a little girl play in the park, representing Doofenshmirtz and his daughter, Vanessa. Vanessa then starts making out with the hoe and mum, and that's how it ends, with a bit of death and a bit of incest. Just how I like my Disney shows. At number 8 we have Mickey Mouse. Now I never actually watched the Mickey Mouse cartoons from the 30s, mainly because I was born 67 years later, but that's fine. There was one unreleased episode that someone found once the show was released on DVD. The tape shows Mickey in black and white, walking past six buildings on a continuous three minute loop. Then the screen fades out with the sound of a banging piano in the background before that also fades to just annoying white noise. And for the longest time everyone thought that's all the tape was but they were wrong. The tape was actually nine minutes long and the tape stays as a black screen until the sixth minute before going back to Mickey. This time the sound in the background is this gurgled cry that gets louder and louder. The sidewalk Mickey is walking on starts warping in ways that defy physics and he starts sm By the seventh minute the cry turns into a scream and Mickey's face begins to fall apart. His eyes roll off his face, his smile becomes even creepier which I didn't even think was possible. The buildings around him become floating rubble and the screaming laughs until the 8th minute. After that point, they get cut off and Mickey's face is just there at the end. The last frame had some writing in Russian on it which translated to the sights of hell brings its viewers back in. Whatever the hell that means. Filling on the seventh slot is Tom's Basement. I absolutely loved watching Tom and Jerry growing up. I feel like I've legit seen all the episodes. It was just funny in a very simple way, and it's an all time classic. No one can deny that. That's why I was so butthurt when I realized it was on the list, because I was like, no, please, not you too. Now, in the episode titled Tom's Basement, Tom's abusive owner warns him to stay away from the basement. He's so adamant about it that he violently beats Tom if he even so much as sleeps near the door. Jerry sees this and starts using it to his advantage by manipulating Tom into chasing him into the basement and then hiding when his owner comes along. After being the one to get him into shit to begin with, Jerry feels bad and he ends up killing the owner for hurting Tom so much. The duo then hide the body in the basement but in a Game of Thrones red wedding level betrayal, Jerry then kills Tom as well. Shocking behaviour Jerry, shocking. 
Now at number six are the Aristocats. You guys know I bloody love cats. I'm seriously considering getting mine a little kitten friend as a companion, but then I'm like, wow, am I really ready for two cats? Am I ready for that? Either way, this one comes from this dude that found a VHS recording of the Aristocats as a kid and decided to watch it. Horrified at what he had seen, he refused to ever watch it again, and his mom couldn't understand why the movie terrified him so much, considering it was like PG-5. When the boy got to the fifth grade, he realized his experience of the movie was quite different to everyone else's. He asked his mom if they still had that VHS copy, but she said she'd thrown it away. It wasn't even a retail copy to begin with, she just bought it at an estate sale, but she ended up surprising him with a new copy of it the next day. The boy worked up the courage to watch it again, and it was fine, which he didn't understand. In the version he had watched, the kittens and their mum were drowned, not drugged, and kidnapped. The boy just couldn't comprehend why he had seen such a different movie at the age of five. He asked his friend, who claimed that perhaps he had seen a bootleg version of the film, but till now he never got to the bottom of it. Plot twist, you probably watched a very photoshopped version of the movie, I'm sorry my friend. You got scarred, and you got scarred good. Coming in at number five is Peter Shadow. I love Peter Pan, you guys, probably obsessively. I saw both animated movies growing up, and the live action one was the movie of my childhood. I've seen it way too many times, I kinda wanna watch it tonight too. Now, I, always, I actually always wanted a Peter Pan related tattoo as well, so that may still be in the cards, you guys, you never know. Either way, this family started watching their VCR version of the movie, and the title screen showed the roof of the house just like the normal movie. But Peter, John, Wendy, and Nana are randomly sleeping on the roof, and the family just assumed it was just a glitch and continued watching the movie. When Peter's shadow lands in their room, Wendy looks at it just like the regular movie, but then we hear her blood curdling scream. Not knowing what the hell was going on, the dad turns off the VCR and tells everyone to go to bed. The girl couldn't fall asleep out of fear and kept having nightmares about Wendy's scream and what the shadow could have done to her. That night at 12.30am, something knocked her nightstand over, but she was too terrified to check it out. I would be the same. I would probably just hide under my covers, never to be seen again until the next morning when it's finally light outside. 30 minutes later, she looks down from her bunk to see Peter's shadow watching her. She ran and slept in her parents' room and all was well until the next night. She dreamt she was asleep in the desert with Peter's shadow. It seemed to be possessing her mind almost. The girl needed counselling for the rest of her life and after finding a black paper in her bed that said him next, her brother then lost his ability to speak. What's up with the shadow? I've never heard of a shadow being that angry and also how can a shadow look at you? It doesn't have eyes. At number four is Mickey and the Flip Mirror. This user found old VHS tapes of TV shows and one of them was titled Mickey and the Flip Mirror. Now, the first two minutes of the tape were black with the sound of waves in the background before Mickey finally comes on screen very briefly. We see Pete's boat pulling into the harbour as Goofy runs to him clearly very angry and shouting. Pete pushes him into the water because he's pissed as well and then the screen cuts to Goofy going into Pete's barn and slamming him against the wall whilst a bunch of hay traps him on the ground. The words 10 minutes before then flash onto the screen and we see Mickey with all his friends on a hill looking at a mirror. Lightning strikes the mirror then and the impact sends Donald Duck back way too far and he ends up falling down the hill as creepy laughter sounds in the background. Mickey is then pulled into the mirror shards by a mysterious hand for a few seconds and then he re-emerges as this beast-like evil version of himself. It then cuts to Goofy somewhere in town and he's all cut up and bleeding and we see evil Mickey dragging him to Pete's bar. On. There we see evil Donald and evil Goofy step out of the mirror and then the words after Pete flash across the screen. Goofy's covered in his blood, Mickey's lit his boat on fire and the trio grow even creepier. Mickey's teeth morph into fangs, Donald's beak melts off and we just see rows and rows of shark teeth and there's just this loud humming in the background. Behind them all we saw was the town burning in flames. And that's honestly all I need to see. Filling at number 3 saw is Inside Out. I'm not gonna lie, I watched Inside Out on one of my flights back home and I cried so much. If you haven't seen the movie, it's essentially about an 11 year old girl called Riley and the five emotions that live inside her. Now in the movie, her family moved to San Francisco, bringing sadness to the forefront of her mind. The story was shared by an internet Pixar Animations who claims there was meant to be an Inside Out sequel. The intern found a DVD titled Riley.exe, so obviously 
you see, they put it on out of curiosity. The title card showed up as Inside Out Profanity, and it showed the family's house at night. The sound of wind accompanied the shots of Mrs. Anderson crying as her eyes turned into blood balls before falling from her damn face. She eventually passes out from crying blood, and then it cuts to Riley laughing demonically, trying to take happy pills. Her head then spins fully around, and we see that her eyes are black voids, and she has massive teeth. In some Spider-Man fashion, she then jumps out of the window and somehow lands on her feet. As the scene comes to a close, we start hearing the sounds that were played at the end of the last Spongebob episode, which I don't even understand. Like, what is the link there? Spongebob is Nickelodeon, this is Pixar slash Disney. Either way, the last shot we see is Riley with bloodshot eyes and monstrous teeth standing in the middle of a forest. How did she get there? Nobody knows. Where did she come from? Where did she go? Where did she come from? Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> And now, number two is 101 Dalmatian Street, part one. And if you realize by now, I'm giving the most gruesome episodes two parts so I can give you the most detail. Now, I had 101 Dalmatians on VCR, so it was the first Disney movie I ever actually watched, and I loved it so much. So I was very surprised that I didn't know the show 101 Dalmatian Street existed. But either way, the episode was titled Dog Food and started off already creepy as hell. The theme song was distorted and super loud, and the lyrics were also completely different. The screen then cuts the main characters Dolly and Dylan sitting in a dark room, apparently frozen. Each puppy can then be seen gagged and tied to the wall, and when Dizzy comes inside the room and asks what the hell they're doing, they both say making a snack for Hunter in an extremely deep demonic voice. The eyes then change into a deep green, and the whole room lights up in a green fire. Then Dolly and Dylan grab some axes and start murdering each puppy one by one. One puppy, Dorothy, isn't fat enough, so they just end up throwing her out a window, and you'd think it can't get worse but it freaking does you guys. I draw the line at animal cruelty. Okay? And finally, at number one is 101 Dalmatian Street Part 2. The scene then cuts to Dolly and Dylan in front of their parents who they've killed and pinned to two crosses. Hunter then comes in saying they have to avenge the death of his grandmother, and so the three go into the streets of London and murder every single dog they see. The massacre goes on for a whopping 10 minutes before the trio run into Hansel, to which Dylan shouts some homophobic things at. Hunter then tells Dylan to kill Hansel, and he actually listens. He slaughters him with a knife while Hunter eats his remains and grows into an ever more powerful demon. Hunter then shoots Dolly and Dylan in the heads and then eats them too, growing bigger and bigger. The end. I think I've ended on the worst one I read. And that's when you get top 10, the worst one is at number one always. Kicking off the list at number 10, SpongeBob SquarePants. Season nine, episode 11. Yeah, the sea sponge was well on his way when the scandals hit this time. SpongeBob kicked off in 1999, also a childhood favorite of mine. I'm growing into Squidward now. I feel it mentally and physically. I'm like, huh, I've got these long, Squid-like tentacle arms, huh. The 11th episode of the ninth season was titled You're Fired, and apparently it sent all the wrong messages. This is quite controversial. Mr. Krabs learns he can save a nickel, literally, by firing the fry cook SpongeBob SquarePants. Patrick tries to cheer SpongeBob up by having fun all day around town, you know, goofing around, more or less ignoring some adult responsibilities, and at the end of the episode, he chills out. He starts applying to other restaurants, whatever. Political debate surrounded this one. Apparently, it was sending the wrong messages to our youth about the responsibilities of being a working adult. Listen, I get that. He's also a sponge. Also, maybe let's not forget why SpongeBob got fired in the first place. Like, let's talk about that more, maybe. Also, does Patrick even have a job? Let's get some resumes going for him before we give SpongeBob a hard time. Guy's the only cook. Give him a holiday. Number nine, Arthur. I swear, DW, she made me more angry growing up than my own siblings did. Ooh, Dora Winfred Reed. <sighs> Nothing but trouble she is. Another gem from our childhood. This animated family epic began in 1996. It officially ended a month ago. Apparently that was a nice surprise. Woke up, checked Twitter one morning. Arthur is like a hipster now in a cafe. Muffy's running for mayor. Buster's a teacher. Are we old? We're old. I'm old. Oh, I knew it. While the show was running this whole time, the showrunners had tons of backlash for one episode in particular, appropriately titled Bleep. The whole episode is centered around DW, of course, as she learns a curse word. We don't know what it is, of course, but she says it a lot. There's a lot of bleeps in this episode. Executive producer Carol Greenwald said in an interview recently that the episode received the most mail and feedback out of all of them. Yeah, they got letters, handwritten, Letters. I remember this episode. I remember seeing it. And I'm now doing stand-up comedy and cursing quite a bit. So, more than fair. That's, that, that's a good call. My mom was probably one of those letters. She's like, oh, mm-hmm, okay. 
Number eight, Sailor Mouth. Yeah, remember this one? Arthur moms weren't ready for this one, not at all. Again, another episode I clearly remember watching. I hope you do as well, that's why I picked these. It's one of the most, most controversial when it comes to bikini bottom. Sailor Mouth, yeah, we're out here getting upset because Dora Winfred Reed learned one curse word. Well, in season two, episode 28, SpongeBob, Learn them all. All of them, all 13. Originally, SquarePants learns one word from reading the back of a dumpster, you know, behind the Krusty Krab. Just a, a great place for education. And he says it, and a dolphin sound is heard. And the garbage man nearby is like, I have never. He's like a YouTube thumbnail. He's like, oh. Patrick convinces SpongeBob that it's a sentence enhancer, but Mr. Krabs later corrects them. As a punishment, Mr. Krabs makes the dirty duo paint the Krusty Krab over, but when Mr. Krabs stubs his toe and says all 13 forbidden words, well, now, now he's in trouble. The three Sailor Mouth vigilantes then have to go and paint Mr. Krabs' mom's house as a punishment. That's funny, but yeah, same issues. Parents believe this one was encouraging foul language. To this day, it's one of the most controversial episodes under the sea. Again, I have to agree, that was a rhyme. Under the sea, I agree. Number seven, Stokey the Bear. Let's get stoked for this one. In many cartoons growing up, there was always a hidden message or a very obvious clear message. Like, you know, preventing forest fires, for example. That's, that's a pretty obvious message when it comes to our pal Smokey the Bear. That's his one message. He kind of nails it, I don't know. The United States Forest Service wasn't too pleased when the second episode of Dudley Do-Right of the Mounties parodied their safety bear. This parody aired during the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle episode 16, so a lot of people saw it. The whole episode episode is like a bizarro version of Smokey. The punchline in this episode was that he was responsible for the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Yeah, not a great bit. That's not too, that's not funny. I don't know. The episode was obviously pulled and hasn't seen the light of day ever again. Yeah, can't show kids lighting fires in forests. I was gonna insert a link, but I'm like, actually, don't. Hit that thumbs up for safety. You wanna see the link? Hit that thumbs up instead. No fires in this house. Number six, the mask of Matches Malone. Mask Matches Malone. It's kind of like a tongue twister. Going back to the nerd days for this one. Here we go, let's go. The Brave and the Bold is an animated Batman series. It's actually amazing. The respect I have for DC with their animated series and their comics, they're dark, they're great. They've always been dark and they've always been great. But sometimes with the cartoon, you can cross the line with the content, even if it's lighthearted. For example, Brave and the Bold came after Batman the Animated Series. It was supposed to lighten up the mood, but an episode that only appears on season 3's DVD bonus features features a Birds of Prey song. A nice catchy song to get stuck in your head. How fun. We love those. Catwoman, Huntress, Black Canary, they all do this fun musical number just absolutely roasting the Justice League. The content was inappropriate. It was sexual in nature. Something about Aquaman and a little fish. You know, you can connect those dots in your head. The jokes were great, but certainly not for a cartoon. The 2020 Birds of Prey movie was rated R. You know what I mean? So... Sometimes the content has to be harsh in order for it to be comic accurate. Number five, Pokemon. Ooh, lots of nostalgia for this one. Here we go, gotta catch them all. This was a staple of my childhood. Pokemon is great. Apparently I can't get enough, even as a 27 year old. I see Pokemon Go in the app store and I'm like, do I do it? Do I commit? My data plan's like, no, you do not commit. Go, get out of here. I wanna be a speed walker and collect them all, so tempting. An episode that aired in 1997 was titled Electric Soldier Porygon. It was all butt fun and games, really. It was pulled off the air almost immediately because these bright strobe-like animations. Yeah, it was causing seizures. This is an issue that can repeat itself even today. When I saw Incredibles 2 in theaters when it first came out, Opening night, you know what's up. There's a scene where the villain, Screen Slaver, is fighting Elastigirl, but there's crazy flashes the entire time. It's supposed to confuse Elastigirl, it's the whole point. Disney Pixar had to edit the scene and then re-release it because of medical issues. Just like the same thing with Electric Soldier Porygon. So, it can even happen today. We're not learning yet. Number four, Gargoyles. Another staple from my childhood. Here we go, what a fun list. Allow me to do more, please. Hit that mm so I can do more mm into my childhood. Here we go. Born the same year as I was, Gargoyles kicked off in 1994. Gargoyles who come to life at night and protect the city. What's there not to love, honestly? Concept art for the canceled live action Disney movie had the internet buzzing recently. And with Disney Plus being so successful, never say never to a live adaptation. Just don't expect it to be the season one episode titled Deadly Force. That probably won't make it into the final script. Again, I'll reinforce that cartoons, their first objective is to send a message. Sometimes that message is just too dark in nature. A cartoon like gargoyles explaining the dangers of firearms. Yeah, they had good intentions, but listen to what I just said. Obviously, it's gonna be scary. When the human detective Eliza is severely injured and barely survives emergency surgery, the staff still views the episode as a teachable moment. So on Disney XD and Toon Disney, the scenes are recut. So now you just see Eliza's face the whole time instead of the horrible 
horrible scene that they originally released. Yeah, it's still jarring to see just her face in a horrible situation, so yeah. The whole message is don't play with firearms, but like honestly, it's so scary. Way more haunting, but I don't know. Number three. Garbage pail kids. A little older than this lanky guy here, but I still had some garbage pail fun growing up. I was still involved. These trading cards were the talk of the town in the late 80s. They were a gross parody, of course, of the Cabbage Patch Kids. We love gross alternatives, yes. My sister had an easy bake oven, and me and my brother had the queasy bake oven. Yeah, we're eating worms tonight, folks. Queasy bake, wah, 90s, so 90s. It's like, whoa, worms and dirt. It's like, just, I like nice things too. I don't know. I don't want to eat dirt and like gross stuff. I want a cupcake. That looks delicious. Uzi Susie and the gang. This was the grossest card game ever. So when the show launched, what do we expect, really, honestly? The 1987 show was deemed too gross for America. Action for Children Television reached out. Christian Leaders for Responsible Television also reached out. And before the show even got momentum, it was canned. Pun intended. I waited for that pun too. It's the first thing I put in that script. Number two, Dexter's Lab. As if the last few weren't bad enough, this one somehow is worse. Swear wise, what's happening? Why are cartoons getting so angry? I didn't see this one growing up, but maybe that's a good thing, honestly. Dexter's Laboratory, I could still hear his little voice in my head. This show was iconic. This and Powerpuff Girls had some sort of energy that you just honestly can't find anymore. Sometimes too much energy, like in the episode titled Rude Removal, for example. Dexter uses his big old brain to separate the rudeness between him and his sister. So now they have clones who have New York accents, who curse a lot. So obviously it didn't work out. And New York, New York. Kids are watching, eating cereal. They're like, oh, nice. Why is he so aggressive? This episode wasn't even aired. The profanity that they did censor was still obvious. You could still make out what they were saying. At least Arthur forced you to get creative. This one was just, you know, this was just all bad. And finally, number one, the Powerpuff Girls. I mentioned them for a reason, our lovely number one on today's list. Seeing as the Powerpuff Girls show was just canceled on CW pretty recently, I figured we'd dive into the scandal vaults with this one. The animated Cartoon Network classic kicked off in 1998, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. It's odd from the get-go, this show. There's a dude, lots of sugars, lots of spices, lots of everything nices. It's, it's pretty wacky at times. It gets really insane. The characters are bold. A little odd, but it's fun. Season five's episode titled See Me, Feel me, know me, was a big musical episode. At least it was supposed to be. The trio meets a magical gnome. He causes trouble to the town and the girls save the day. As far as Powerpuff Girls episodes go, this was pretty tame. The episode was not allowed on US airwaves because the metal beams and the destroyed buildings looked like crosses. And one of the dudes apparently looked like Jesus. So it couldn't be aired because, I mean, obviously fair. That's more than fair. But if you want to see the Lord's work yourself, the episode is still available online on some platforms. Starting us off at number 10, Crepes of Wrath. So this episode aired way back in the first season and is the 11th episode. It was originally meant to be the finale of season one, but that changed. It has been criticized for being mildly xenophobic, but that's not the biggest issue for those who didn't like this episode. If people watched it as a kid, it could be quite troubling to watch, and one person even called it depressing. For two months, Bart is on exchange. He is put to work day and night and says his hosts don't feed him and he sleeps on the floor. Yeah. So the first season and even the second season of The Simpsons had some heavier plot lines. They were not afraid to go darker. Crude animation paired with well-explored despair isn't exactly a way of describing The Simpsons these days, but it was back then. So there is a lost element to this episode, just a deleted scene. It was nothing too wild, just Bart saying woo to some dancers. But it happened, and that's lost, so, eh? On to number nine, that 90s show. So we're gonna jump way ahead a whole 18 seasons to the 11th episode of the 19th season. You heard it the first time I said it, that 90s show. Obviously the show title is a nod to the sitcom That 70s Show, and it also tries to be a throwback. The problem is The Simpsons already aired like a bunch of seasons in the 90s. So that already throws a wrench into the timeline. And if you haven't seen this episode, you may be thinking that this episode may revisit old plots or something. You know, make things a bit more complex. But alas, it does the opposite. It decides to rewrite history, just right over the canon. So sure, consistency in such a long standing show is never a given, but this episode wasn't even that good, you know? It was just another episode of Homer and Marge breaking up and getting back together, but this time all before the kids. There were funny bits like, don't get me wrong here, but overall it just wasn't enough for me to get over the diss to the original canonical material. On to number eight, The Principal and the Popper. So this one was episode two of season nine. A fun fact, it aired the same year I was born. Another fun fact, on the legitimate Simpsons fan wiki, it is cited as one of the most controversially hated episodes ever produced. Yeah. And it was the last one written by Ken Keeler. He says it's the best work he's ever done, so. 
you know, different opinions. But anyways, this episode is about how Principal Skinner is actually a man named Armin Tamzarian who was mistaken for Principal Skinner. Skinner's mom made the mistake and the ruse held for about 26 years. So then once it's found out and they put the real Skinner back in charge, the thing is no one really likes the real Skinner back in charge. So then they went to get Armin back and gave him Skinner's identity again and they tied the real Skinner to a chair on a freight train car and then just sent him off. And then the judge ordered no one to talk about it ever again. So overall people just didn't like that a major character was always a masked fraud and then the issue was covered up and dropped forever. As before, people just love their canon, what can I say? But let's move on to number seven. Mo goes from rags to riches. So this is the 12th episode of season 23. In this episode, a rag tells the story of its life to the entire town, really. So they were all there for a town meeting because the town hall is full of bed bugs and then Mo, the barkeep just storms off because people are making fun of him for his best friend and in their defense, his best friend is bar rag. But in Mo's defense, cleaning supplies are our best friends right now, so. Take it or leave it. All in all, the episode centers around this rag weaving a story of how it came to be. So you've heard of watching paint dry, now here's a rag telling you a story. Yeah, it didn't receive great reviews by critics. One critic said it didn't really feel like an episode of The Simpsons, and others said the main plot and subplot were both boring. So in this case, more people are saying the episode may have been better off lost. Ouch. On to number six, Every Man's Dream. So this is another recent one, the season 27 premiere. As the title suggests, this one has to do with dreaming, and it falls into the old trope. It was all a dream. At one point, you think it is subverting the trope even slightly with a double dream sequence where you think reality is the dream and you go back to your old reality, but then no, it scraps it all. Let me give you some more details. The basic plot of this one, we have just seen before. It's even already on this list. Homer's actions are enough to drive a wedge in his marriage to Marge. Then he tries to win her back. You know the drill. In this one, the couple separate and even saw other people, but Homer is seeing his pharmacist Candace, and we don't get an explanation of what Candace really sees in Homer. Like, he's a great guy at his core, but in this episode, it doesn't really show that aspect of him. And also, Marge and the family story just feels like an afterthought. Remember when I said the first and second season were a little more gritty? This episode's content like nearly had that chance and then just ignored it. And basically the fans noticed, didn't really like it too much. Let's move on to number five, Diatribe of Mad Housewife. This one is the 10th episode of season 15. It is scary because Homer is working as an ambulance driver. And honestly, nothing bad could have even happened in that situation and I would still be on edge. In one instance, the kids are riding with him. Bart says, Dad, you've been driving in circles for 20 minutes. And then Lisa says, why don't you just admit you don't know where the hospital is? And then Homer says, why don't you admit I know it's around here somewhere? And that just little clip snippet is to say that they were lost on their way to the hospital. And that's a scary situation if they were in real life. Plus, Homer is an ambulance driver. That was his job. <laughs> to know where the hospital. Like obviously this is a cartoon. I, I get it, but still. And yes, lost and scary. It had everything that's in the title. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, on to number four, Bart the Fink. So this is from season seven, episode 15. This is the episode where Homer gives some somber, morbid advice. He says to Bart, don't let Krusty's death get you down, boy. People die all the time, just like that. Why, you could wake up dead tomorrow. Well, good night. And isn't that what every kid wants to hear before going to bed? So what led to this? Bart accidentally got Krusty arrested for tax fraud and then Krusty faked his own death. So Bart is thinking it's his fault and is mourning his personal hero. So then Homer goes in, tries to give some good words, but then he says that. So Bart is confronted with the reality of his mortality as he waits for the night and sleep to come to him. And he's, it's a lot for a kid. And so while it's good to remember your actions have consequences, telling kids they could die tomorrow is probably a step too far for me personally. Yeah. So let's move on to number three, the first Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. So this one aired all the way back on October 25th, 1990. It is the third episode of the second season. So producers thought it would be possibly so unsettling that they had Marge give a warning to like the audience that things were gonna get scary. She speaks to the viewers and said it is going to be a scary episode and that it may be a good time to put the kids to bed. So for the Treehouse of Horror episodes, the first one in particular, this one was inspired by the EC Comics horror tales. And I would say this is one I would definitely recommend watching, so I will not spoil it completely, but I will say it does reference Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, it has aliens in it, and there are elements of it that I would say make you just feel off, but I'll leave you to watch it and you judge for yourself. But this is one that is scary and I'd say lost to time. It's just so long ago. It's 1990, Phew, who's that, you know? 
Mm. Let's move on to number two, Lisa Goes Gaga. So this one is just the lowest rated Simpsons episode of all time on IMDb. It's also the 22nd season's finale. Basically, Lady Gaga is teaching Lisa Simpson the meaning of happiness, but Dave Rada on Reddit summed up what critics were saying the best. It was released at the apogee of Lady Gaga's popularity, and it was a shameless attempt to cash in on the flavor of the month's popularity. The Simpsons episode damn near killed Gaga's career, and she had to sing songs from the Great American Songbook with Tony Bennett and do live theater on NBC to regain any cultural relevance. And wow, yeah, people were not, that was, yeah, that was just really not a fan. People did not like that one at all. I had, uh, yeah. But I like Lady Gaga, I think she's fun. On to number one, Dead Bart. So if you're here, there is no doubt you've heard of this one. The one lost episode, Dead Bart, ooh. And so if for whatever reason you haven't heard, there's a TV urban legend that there's a lost episode of The Simpsons called Dead Bart. It was an episode where Bart died. And the story goes that if you talk about it, anyone that worked on The Simpsons in those days will try to keep you away from Matt growing. Apparently he doesn't like to talk about it. It allegedly happened in the first season and its production number was given to the later episode, Moaning Lisa. It was hidden so no one would ask about it and it was a gruesome story diving deep into loss and the effects of grief on a family. It had shots of Bart's corpse, made to look more realistic than usual in the cartoons, and extended shots of the family crying. Just really dark content. But I have to give you all the truth if you didn't know it already. It's a creepypasta, made up for the internet. But we have to give the author credit that they gave enough detail that they really made a bunch of people believe it. They posted under the name K.I. Simpson. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Abra and the Psychic Showdown. This is the first episode in a group of three that is often cited as the focal point of horror across the entire series, which definitely is saying something. This episode sees the party arriving in Saffron City where a young girl named Sabrina manages a gym using her psychic powers. Ash of course challenges her and if he defeats her, he can earn a gold badge, but Sabrina accepts on the condition that if she wins, they have to be her friends. The battle begins, but unfortunately Pikachu is no match for Sabrina's Abra, who evolves into a Kadabra, and ends up beating Pikachu until Ash forfeits. This of course means that Sabrina gets her condition and she chooses to shrink them all down and to put them in a tiny toy house. Sabrina has another self, like a puppet self, which is still normal sized and it towers over the building and tries to crush all the doll sized people with this giant ball. It's really weird and really creepy. In our number 9 spot today we have Haunter vs Kadabra. So on the last one I explained that it was the first of a series of three episodes. We are skipping the second because it isn't that creepy and now we have the third. Basically in this episode Ash is still determined to win the gold badge and defeat Sabrina. The two of them are face to face again when suddenly Ash Ash's ghost Pokemon, the thing he felt like he really needed, is nowhere to be found. This leads to him feeling humiliated and leaving the gym, but Brock and Misty are left behind and as a result, what does Sabrina do? Well, of course, she turns them into little dolls again, which renders them completely helpless. It's the same sort of energy as the first, just really creepy and helpless. The episode definitely was leaving people on the edge of their seats. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Ghost of Maiden's Peak. In this episode, Ash, Brock, and Misty all travel to Maiden's Peak, and it is here that they learn about a maiden who lived about 2,000 years ago. Sadly, her love went off to war, and she has been waiting for his return ever since. That alone is so terribly sad, but eventually, after years and years of waiting, she ended up turning to stone. Every year during this season, the ghost of the woman steals the spirit of a young man, and during this episode, Brock and James seem to be the targets. It is said that the entire tone of this episode is quite dark and grim, and it leaves us wanting to know the answers to what this ghost is really after, and what her true identity really is. In our number 7 spot today, we have Pikachu and Piku. This is an episode that ended up finding itself banned in Japan. Rather than because of the actual content of the episode, it was actually because of someone who was the narrator of this short. Sakai Noriko was arrested in 2009 and later convicted from the charges, and because of this, the short was banned. Since this incident, it hasn't been rerun or released on any sort of home video or video on demand type situation in Japan. In fact, the Pikachu the Movie Premium box from 1998 to 2010, it was the only theatrical Pikachu short to be excluded, so. 
doesn't seem like this one will be one that really ever gets played or recognized again. In our number six spot today, we have Ghoul Days. This episode starts out on the fifth day of the Pokemon Summer Academy, and it sees the students doing an assignment where they must partner up and head out to the summit ruins at night. Of course, this means that there's bound to be ghosts and such, which already sets the episode up for a spooky time, but the spookiest part of the entire episode comes in the form of Conway's partner. He finds a partner, but it turns out that she is a ghost, and this ghost is horrifying. She causes a ton of mischief, some of which is truly a little insane, and everyone begins trying to get this mischief to stop. A Dusk Noir tries to help with this, but in the end, everyone is afraid of the Dusk Noir. It's just chaos, and it's creepy. The ghost tries to pull people into the underworld, but the Dusk Noir ends up saving the day, and in the end, we don't really ever find out who that ghost girl was or why she wanted to drag them into the underworld with her. In our number five spot today, we have Seeking Shelter from the Storm. This episode sees the heroes and Team Rocket seeking shelter from a terrible storm inside of an old abandoned mansion. When they begin to explore the house, they firstly are terrified and are convinced that the mansion is haunted, but when they run into a mysterious being with glowing red eyes, they get even more freaked out. They come to find that this being is an Esper and it's keeping them from leaving. The Esper shows them the pendant that she has around her neck and in the end everyone realizes that she wants to return it to an old lady that used to live in this mansion. Unfortunately, by this time it is too late as the woman has passed away. This episode is said to be honestly not only a little bit frightening but also quite emotional. In our number 4 spot today we have the Electric Soldier Porygon. This is an episode that in itself isn't really dark or creepy. Like it's not what the episode really contains or the storyline that landed it its spot on this list. This episode was only broadcast once in Japan on December 16th, 1997. The episode has a scene in it where Pikachu uses a thunderbolt on a missile which goes on to produce these flashing strobe lights. Of course, this proved to be problematic for hundreds of those who were watching the episode, as that strobe effect can be seriously harmful to certain people, especially those with epilepsy. Many of those watching this episode unfortunately went on to have seizures or just general feelings of sickness, and as a result, it saw many of them attending nearby hospitals. It is said that this was the only time the episode aired, either in or out of Japan. In our number three spot today, we have Sandshrew's Locker. This episode starts out with Ash and Co on their way to Heart Home City when they are approached by Myra who is friendly and offers them a shortcut, all they need to do is use her Abra to teleport there. They accept the offer but things go awry when they realize that they have instead been teleported to the top of a dam. Myra apologizes but since they're already there she asks for their help in finding a piece of lost jewelry that was an heirloom that she says has been lost in the lake behind the dam. They agree to help her and Myra leads them on a dive into the lake and this is when they find a submerged town. Here, this is where they encounter an angry Gyarados, which forces them to sort of draw back, and then they then confront Myra and ask her to tell them what's really going on. Myra finally explains that she used to live in this submerged town prior to it being underwater, and that her Sandshrew was left behind in its Pokeball when the people in the town moved. That's basically the premise of the episode, and then they go on to devise a plan to recover this lost Sandshrew, but many people agree on the darkness of this episode due to the fact that Myra Sandshrew has been there for who knows how long, all alone, just waiting and unable to do anything. I guess when you put it like that, I'd probably be inclined to agree. In our number two spot today, we have a night at the Nacreen City Museum. This is an episode where the heroes arrive at Nacreen City and realize that the gym is inside of the city museum. When they enter the museum, they come to find a very terrified man. This man is Haas, who is the museum co-curator, and he is terrified because he claims to have recently seen some apparitions around just ahead of the museum's launch of their secret artifact exhibition. As they listen to what has been happening, Iris decides that there has been some sort of angry spirit that is putting a curse on the museum, but Silen disagrees, saying that what is going on must be scientific. They decide to spend the night at the museum to investigate, and that is when they come to realize that a Yamask, which Hawes thought was a replica, is actually a real Pokemon, and it was this Yamask that was appearing like it was haunting the museum. Museum, but really it just
just wanted its mask back. There is a part in this episode where the Yamask takes control over Silent Spirit and begins to attack the others, which is widely regarded as one of the creepiest parts of the entire episode. In our number one spot today, we have the scare at the Litwick Mansion. This is one episode that is said to be one of the creepiest out there. The episode starts with Team Rocket inside of a mansion that the heroes end up finding solace from a rainstorm in, but the heroes are at first unaware of anyone else's presence in the mansion. Team Rocket is planning to try and catch Pikachu, and they enlist the help of a group of Litwicks to help them fulfill this plan. Little do they know, however, that they are actually draining James, Meowth's, Silen's, Iris's, and Ash's life energy slowly. The episode has some super dark scenes and imagery, and we literally see all of them almost die in this episode, which is definitely a lot to handle. That is exactly why it is referred to as one of the darkest episodes out there. Starting us off at number 10 is Patrick's leg. But the episode starts off normally, and Patrick and SpongeBob go sandboarding, and as Patrick tries to do a trick, he falls and loses his leg. He lets out this shrill scream that's haunting to say the least. Patrick ends up on a wheelchair for a while and girls keep wanting to sign his cast to the dismay of Spongebob. Either way, that night Spongebob goes to his house and tells them he can't see those girls ever again and then they end up fighting after which he tells Spongebob that he hates him. Then Spongebob starts beating Patrick's lost leg with a rock but the dialogue and animation at this point are not matching up. The screen then cuts to Patrick playing with Jeffrey Jellyfish before going black once again. It then cuts to a CG animation of Patrick cutting Spongebob's stomach open with some coral and very realistic blood coming out of him. Spongebob for some reason now is laughing maniacally at this moment before everything goes black and the sound of static gets louder and louder. Ugh. Ew. Blah. Coming in at number 9 is the bootleg episode. This episode itself is a mix of static, random colours and black screens. The audio isn't even intelligible, it's heavily distorted and includes some metallic screeches here and there. The tape itself was found by a group of five teens back in December of 2004. They were hanging around the back of a mental institution and they happened to find it in its bin. A. Why were they hanging behind a mental institution and B. Why were they rifling through the bin? Maybe they deserve to find the tape, that's all I'ma say. The tape itself shows Spongebob slouched over in a dark room and his eyes are bloodshot like he's been crying. Ten seconds later, he takes a bottle of pills from a nearby table while the screen is flickering between light and dark colours. The screams of children come on in the background before going silent as Spongebob swallows all the pills. He drops to the floor holding his stomach and then starts frothing at the mouth before vomiting all over himself and eventually dying before the screen goes black. No one knows where the tape is now and the teens that found it are also nowhere to be found. Two of them committed suicide, one disappeared and the other two, well god knows. Maybe only Spongebob knows. At number 8 we have Squidward's Suicide Part 1. Now this is probably the most famous lost Spongebob episode hailing from none other than Creepy Pasta. The story is shared by someone who claimed to be an internet Nickelodeon Studios back in 2005. The person worked with the editors and animators and they always reviewed the new episodes before they aired. Sometimes the editors would just put up mock titles as a joke and one day they saw the title card Squidward's Suicide. Now thinking it was nothing more than a morbid joke, they decided to play it. Now, it showed Squidward finishing his concert and then the frames started repeating themselves. The crowd starts booing Squidward maliciously and it wasn't just the light cartoon like booing, it was proper booing. You can even see Spongebob booing the sponge that doesn't have a single mean bone in his body. Or sponge or whatever he is. Squidward is visibly scared and everyone at this point has very realistic red eyes. We then see Squidward crying on his bed but the sounds were split with what sounded like laughing and then just screeching. And then the frames kept glitching. Filling on number 7 slot is Squidward's Suicide Part 2. Now the lead animation editor rewound the scene frame by frame and saw a picture of a dead boy with an extremely mangled bloody face. One of his eyes were hanging out and his stomach was cut with his intestines laying beside him. Horror took the room as the frames go back to Squidward now crying blood. That went on for about 20 more seconds before the screen glitched again and the editor rewound once again. This time it was a little girl in a pool of blood 
she was naked except for wearing underwear and her eye was popped out just like the first boy. Her entrails were piled on top of her and an intern in the room actually ran out at that point needing to vomit. It's, it's honestly too much. Tears and blood continued to run down Squidward's face and then all of a sudden the sound of a deep demonic laugh came and lasted five frames. When that was rewound, they could see a boy with his entrails being pulled out by somebody's hand. Again, one eye was popped out and in the end, the last shot is Squidward staring at you with a deep voice saying, do it, before he puts a shotgun in his mouth and shoots himself. That's a lot to take in. Now, obviously it's a creepy pasta, it's probably fake, but still. Now, at number six is the yard sale shared by an anonymous dad. He said he went to a yard sale a few years ago with his two sons and they ended up buying an old box set of SpongeBob SquarePants. That night, the dad put on the episode for the kids for it to start off as normal. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants, etc, etc. You get the gist. However, five minutes into the episode, the screen went staticky and the only sound you could hear was the sound of someone running their nails down a chalkboard. Now I have goosebumps just thinking about that sound and I didn't even hear it. I just hate it. Then some dialogue came of SpongeBob crying, but it was super distorted. He was saying, you shouldn't have seen this over and over again. Then Mr. Krabs comes on screen with his claws cut off and a countdown next to him. He starts counting down from 10 while saying if you turn off the tape now, none of you will survive. The kids started crying, the dad was freaking the hell out, and when the timer finally got to zero, the lights in the house went out. When they came back on, both his kids were gone. Coming in at number 5 is Sandy's Revenge. Back in 2006, this episode of Spongebob apparently aired at 1.34am. It started off with Spongebob depressed as hell walking to Sandy's tree dome and his eyes are bloodshot so we can assume he's been crying. After standing outside her door for five minutes, he knocks and at the fifth knock, Sandy opens the door, looking equally as sad. She lets him in, saying thanks for coming and just as Spongebob is out to open his mouth, Sandy lunges at him, strangling him to death. After she's sure he's dead, she ties his body to a wooden board before throwing it out of her house. Apparently, on the edge of a mental breakdown now, Sandy starts screaming as she starts trashing her own house. In the background, in a plot twist turn of events, we see Squidward lying on the ground and we don't know if he's dead or not. Then he suddenly gets up and runs at her with a fork, but Sandy dodges him and chokes him to death. Sandy, who hurt you? At number four is The Birthday. This episode comes from someone who was looking for Spongebob torrents online and downloaded this one titled Sorry Spongebob. It starts with Squidward playing his clarinet as Patrick opens his door saying it's Spongebob's birthday and that we're going to surprise him. Squidward then asks who's invited before saying they can't all surprise him. Patrick then says they'd love to, it's going to be so much fun and then Squidward shouts no angrily before kicking him out. Which honestly isn't that out of the blue since Squidward is just annoyed all the time. The screen then goes to black before going to Spongebob's dark house with all the birthday guests waiting and whispering inside. When he walks in, the lights go on and everyone yells surprise, but the shock is so huge that Spongebob screams and punches himself in the chest, causing himself to choke. Hyperrealistic blood starts pouring out of the holes in his body before his body finally hits the ground. His friends start screaming and running out of the house as Squidward comes in with bloodshot eyes. All he says is, Patrick, I told you before the screen cuts to his funeral. Falling out of the slot is Scar Bob Death Pants. Now this person was trying to find a VHS tape for his little sister when he randomly came upon one labeled SBDP. It ended up being a SpongeBob VHS and when he put it in, it started off with SpongeBob holding a butter knife as Patrick confronted him. Squidward had human eyes at this point photoshopped on him as he lay on the ground. It then shows SpongeBob coming out of his house, but his house was covered in cuts and bloodstains because apparently pineapples bleed too. The hand that usually pulls his pants off is instead stabbed by Spongebob. He cuts the hand into tiny bits and pieces before eating it. He then goes back inside his house to his bathtub, but instead of water inside it was body parts and blood. He then soaks up all the bloody water with the body parts before full on eating them. The boy watching ended up vomiting and before shutting off the tape he heard Tom Kenny's voice saying, you're next kid, Tom Kenny being the guy who voiced Spongebob. Now at number 2 is the Camp Coral Massacre Part 1. So Spongebob has a spin-off show called Camp Coral that is set to air later this year. Some have managed to get the official reel of the show and decide to download it onto their laptop. It started off with a slowed down version of Spongebob's campfire song before the title Camp Coral Massacre came on screen. It then cut to the sign outside the campsite as fog began to roll in in the darkness and the camera zooms into a younger Spongebob asleep on top of a bunk 
bed. Patrick is at the bottom and they both wake up to the sound of heavy footsteps outside their cabin. They decide to investigate but out of nowhere an image of a woman with her head split open flashes on the screen. As the two go outside the fog gets worse and Spongebob bumps into someone thinking it's Patrick. But Patrick's behind him and after shining the light in front of them they see this fish holding a hatchet. Dun dun dun. And finally, at number one is the Camp Coral Massacre Part 2. Now obviously at this point they run away screaming for their lives as the fish chases after them. The other campers wake up and see what's going on as the fish heads for all of them instead. He hits one in the head as blood squirts on the campers around them. Campers start getting evacuated and the screen cuts to Spongebob and Patrick hiding under their beds, clearly scared as anyone would be if a fish was wielding a hatchet. As the screaming dies down outside, Patrick gets up to look outside to see piles of bodies on top of each other. Thinking the fish is gone, he turns to Spongebob to tell him the coast is clear, but suddenly starts spewing blood and falls to the ground. The fish hatcheted him in the back, and despite trying to escape, he grabs Spongebob Crying and begging for his life, the fish hits Spongebob repeatedly in the face until he's unrecognizable and the fish is covered in blood. The last shot is showing the utter anarchy that befell the camp. The end. And that is it for today's video guys, very morbid, I never thought Spongebob would get that dark. I always thought the only thing funnier than 24 would always be 25. <laughs>